Hello, everybody. This is Mr. Lawback. I hope you're having a great day. In this podcast type of a lecture, we are going to go over the growth of presidential power during U.S. history. So we are going to talk about why presidential power grew, some examples and evidence of it growing, and ways in which it has been or has been attempted to have been reined in. Without a doubt, very few issues during the Constitutional Convention were more hotly debated than the shaping of the office of the presidency. The first debate centered around whether there should even be a president. And once it was decided that there would be one, should the office consist of one person or a small group of leaders? In the end, the framers created a one-person chief executive. Now, the debate did not end there. Of course, there was also how do we elect a president? Of course, the framers decided on the electoral college system. Presidential powers would be broad in some respects, particularly foreign affairs, but limited in other areas. Even so, the idea of a chief executive scared many people in the U.S. during the ratification process. Remember, not long ago, before the ratification process, the Revolutionary War was fought against a king, so they feared the idea of a tyrant. Had it not been generally understood that George Washington was going to be the first president, it is quite possible the issue could have derailed the ratification of the Constitution altogether. The Constitution's formal grants of power to the president have not really changed since the Constitution was ratified in 1789. Yet presidential power has grown remarkably since ratification, and much of that came in unofficial ways. There are several reasons for the dramatic expansion of presidential powers. First, the president themselves have expanded their own power. The Constitution is kind of vague in detailing presidential power, and presidents simply filled the void as they saw fit. Some of the notable presidents to expand their own power were Abraham Lincoln, Andrew Jackson, and Teddy and Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Also, each president asserted themselves into some sort of issue, meaning that subsequent presidents were expected to do the same. The American public does not like when a president sits on the sideline and does not get involved in issues they feel need to be addressed. Many people naturally look to the president to solve problems. Secondly, the ability of the president to exert power has grown due to the expansion of the executive branch. There are many more departments and agencies in the bureaucracy than there used to be. Because presidents have this large executive branch, they have been able to exert more power and control over nearly all aspects of domestic and foreign policy. Thirdly, the nation's increasingly complex economy and society has increased presidential power. As the U.S. has become more industrialized and technologically advanced, many citizens wanted the federal government to take a larger and larger role in things like transportation, communication, health, welfare, employment, education, and civil rights, which are among just a few of the items people expect a more active president. Fourthly, the need for immediate and decisive action in a time of crisis, and most notably in a time of war, has also had a major impact on the power of the president. The ability of the president, a single commanding chief executive, to act in a situation has allowed the presidency to even strengthen more. Finally, Congress has also been involved in the growth of presidential power and has passed thousands of laws that have increased presidential power. This is not because they specifically wanted to increase the power of the president, They were forced to because of the added complexity of the federal government as time has gone on. So those are five major reasons presidential power has grown throughout U.S. history. And one could assume that power will continue to grow for the presidency. Now let's focus on some ways that presidential power has been limited. The Constitution limits presidential power. So obviously, as the president's power has grown, the Constitution, through checks and balances, has limited some of that growth. The Supreme Court has overruled certain presidential action and presidential powers. This has happened throughout history. This, of course, is also part of checks and balances. Congressional oversight has also played an important role in limiting the power of the president. Remember, Congress has the power to investigate the actions of the executive branch. Now, that can be the actions of the bureaucracy or any of the agencies, but can also investigate the actions of a president to see if they were warranted or not. This also is part of checks and balances. Now, as time has gone on, people have been critical about the increasing power of the president. 
There are people that fear a, quote, imperial president. This, they state, is a president that has become too powerful and there are not enough checks in place to limit the power of the president. Those that speak out against the imperial president feel like the presidential power has grown too vast and should be reined in. Conversely, supporters of presidents getting more power think that it has been absolutely necessary with our complicated society and the growing federal government, and that it is natural that because of these things, presidential power would grow also. I hope this lecture helps you better understand why presidential power has grown and the ways in which presidential power can be reined in. Thanks for listening and watching, and have a great rest of the day.